to welcome all of you here this evening and those on live stream also. It is good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. This will be the tenth message on the subject of the coming of the Lord. Now the coming of the Lord is going to be a day of revelation. God's word will be revealed is totally true. The reality of God will be revealed. The supremacy of Christ will be revealed. The temporality of the natural order will be revealed. See, the moment Jesus is made known, all these things, be, anyone's had any question about them, it's going to be cleared up. The fact of Satan's defeat will be revealed. The identity of the people of God will be revealed. The identity of the children of Satan will be revealed. See, all that's going to be revealed when Jesus comes again. So it's good to get to jump on things and know the truth of these ahead of time. Because whoever is surprised by these revelations, well, you don't want to be in that number. I don't I don't know what the consequences are going to be, but I would say that the safe thing is to is to know these things before Jesus comes. Amen. All of it will be known instantly. For those who have known ahead of time it'll be a confirmation or a verification. There'll be a lot of joy for people who knew it. But that revelation is going to be just a beginning. It's not an end of itself. Jesus coming, see, but that's not a, that's not the end of the matter. That's the beginning of the Amen. of the matter. The day of judgment <laughs> is going and day of judgment and accountability will confirm the reality of these things before an assembled universe. I use the word universe in reference to personalities. Before men and angels, principalities and powers, demons, Satan, the whole at one fell swoop. Every created personality is going to see the truth of these things. Amen. It's going to set off a howl yeah, right. among some. And that's just the beginning. They're going to, trembling and is going to commence at the beginning. And it's not going to let up. Whoever's a trembling when Jesus comes, it's not going to let up. Right. If you have wondered whether you will be trembling or not, if you are grow accustomed to Jesus now and walk with Jesus, take my word on this, Christ's coming will not scare you. But if you don't, it will. And if it scares you, well, that's a bad start. <laughs> bad start. God's going to be justified in all of his sayings. Everyone that's had a controversy with God is going to know who's right. Everyone that's rejected what he said is going to be made known who was wrong. I mean, the consequences of it are remarkable. Everyone who's disagreed with God, everybody's going to know who they were by name. Amen. Everyone who agreed with it, everybody's going to know who they are by name. Now let's look, first of all, we're talking tonight speaking tonight about the coming of the Lord and the giving of an account to God. Now, the fact of the matter is that man is accountable to God. Now, you, you wouldn't uh, surmise this by looking at the contemporary church and society in general. You would never come to this conclusion. But men are accountable to God. It is written As I live. Now you can't, 
you can't confirm anything more solidly than that. As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess. That's the truth. If they don't bow now, they're going to bow then. But it's not going to be for salvation. Amen. When you bow then and it results in salvation, you get a taste of the salvation on this side. I wish we could get this across to people. Well, we must continue to try. Let's not be discouraged in it. Amen. Just giving an account to God, that's part of bowing and confessing. As soon as Jesus comes, everybody's going to know who the real Lord is. <laughs> they're going to bow down before him and they're going to confess, you're the Lord. Amen. Whether they did this side of it or not, they're going to do it then. It would be their condemnation if they didn't do it here. And they give an account to him because they were created by God. Isaiah 45, 12 says, I have made the earth and created man upon it. God says, I did that. I created man upon earth. They, no man has any right to be accountable to someone else before they're accountable to God. It, yeah. It's just not right. Under any conditions, it's not right. You're first of all, men are accountable to God because he made them. And those that have been recreated by God, they're accountable too. For what they did, what did you do with your recreation? Just exactly what did you do? See, it's going to be an embarrassing moment for a lot of people, frightening moment. I took away your sins, what would you do? To go back to them? That's not the time you want to deal with this. Amen. You want to deal with this now before that time. <clears throat> Did you go back to your sin like a dog to his vomit? And I, I told you where you're headed. I told you you're going to die. I told you you're going to go to the judgment. Uh -huh. I just exactly what have you done to prepare for that? Well, see, I was busy. You know, I, I got a lot of things I got to do. You got a lot of things you got to do. Well, this is the preeminent thing you've got to do is get ready. Amen. That's the preeminent thing. See, the day of judgment is a day of accountability. Amen. The day of judgment is not to find out who's saved and who's lost. That's, that's determined before you leave the world. It's a day when God's going to vindicate himself that everything he said is true. What he said were the main things are the main things. And when he said he has a certain attitude towards sin, he does have that attitude. And when he says he'll receive someone that comes out from among them and touches not the unclean thing, find out that was the absolute truth. Amen. They have accountability. And you know, in this, uh, in this day, nations, this isn't going to be like a, a, a day, a 24-hour day. I heard a man preach this on, I forget the name of the program now, it's a regular Bible program. He said the day of judgment is going to pass like an instant. Oh no, how wrong they are. No one that thinks this should be preaching. They should be sitting in the classroom of Christ. That might be thought to be true if the day of judgment to determine whether you're in or out. It isn't. It's to unveil that God's Amen. right Amen. and every man Amen. who contradicted him is a liar. Amen. And it's for that purpose. And nations are going to be judged collectively. See, it's not in the cities to be judged collectively. And individuals will be judged. Generations will be judged. See, so we're talking about a, probably at least as long as the world, probably a lot longer than that. You know, it says that the heat that overcomes is going to beat the nations into plowshares, or beat the nations with a rod of iron. Yeah, it's probably talking about the day of judgment, probably what, it, what it's talking about. <clears throat> going to judge nations. Here's Jesus. 
And he's talking about his second coming, Matthew 25. He talks all about it in Matthew 24. Then in Matthew 25 is the parable of the ten virgins. It's about his second coming. And it, at that time, when the, ten, when the five wise virgins went in, the others were excluded. Matthew 25, 32 says, And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another as a sheep divided the sheep Shepherd divided the sheep from the goats. Nation of Israel will be there. Nation of America will be there, and England will be there. All nations will be there. Some of these nations have been noted for worshiping another god. They'll be there. Right? Be there to account for that. Some of these nations have said they worship the true God and live like the devil. They'll be, they'll be, they'll be there. There's going to be cities, whole cities, brought up on the Day of Judgment. Here's this uh, Matthew 12, 41. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation. I imagine that's not the only one. And shall condemn it. Let me, see, let me make sure I got this right. The men of Nineveh. That is what it says. Jesus said. This is, the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and condemn it. Uh -huh. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. Now, don't you doubt it for a moment. Cities like Chicago, New York, Las Vegas, Hollywood, Joplin, Springfield, St. Louis. This is going to come up on the Day of Judgment. Amen. And the men of Nineveh are going to rise up and say, Hey, we repented after one negative sermon. And they're going to condemn those cities. Amen. And God's going to underwrite their condemnation. Hmm. Oh, day of judgment, see, we have accountability. There's going to be comparisons made on that day. People say, well, everybody's going to stand on their own. Well, yes, in a sense, that's true. There's going to be comparisons made between some, some cities and other cities, some people and other people. Jesus said to one of the cities at whom he, where he did most of his mighty works, Woe unto thee, Chorazin. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. That's where Peter and Andrew are from. You know. Woe unto you, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Amen. But I say unto you, this is the Son of God talking now. I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. It's the Son of God talking. Amen. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted into heaven, because Jesus took up residence there, thou shalt be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee have been done in Sodom, it would have remained unto this day. Amen. Joplin probably told that. Because a lot of folk haven't repented in Joplin, just in right. case you don't know it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just I say, just in case you don't know it. Amen. A lot of people here haven't repented in this city. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, there's a the remnant, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. But it is a remnant. You think Jesus meant that? Do you think Sodom would really have remained if they'd have known what this city knows? Well, Jesus said it would have. If what had been done by Jesus in Bethsaida had been done in Sodom, God wouldn't have burned it up. Yeah, That's right. what he said. Yeah, amen. It had remained to this day. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is serious business when people don't follow God. Amen. You won't get this idea when you hear preachers preach in our day. Amen. You don't get the idea that it's a critical matter whether you obey God, listen to him, and obey him or not, you don't get the idea that it's really that serious because it's a different kind of a God that's being preached. 
It's a God that can tolerate all of this malarkey Amen. and this indifference and this lukewarmness and this lack of faith and this distracted to other things and getting enmeshed with the world. See, there's a God being preached that can put up with that, but the real God can't. Amen. And on the day of judgment, that's going to be brought up. Yeah, and there's going to be individuals. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment. Can you just see, can you just get the, just get a picture of this august assembly, the whole, every personality that's ever been created is going to be standing there. Just in case anyone wonders who the Lord is, everyone's going to know who the Lord, who the Lord of this assembly is. And the queen of Sheba, she's going to rise up when our fair city comes up and stands before the Lord. Yeah. Queen of Sheba is going to rise up. Here's what Jesus said. Queen of the south mm -hmm. shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Mm -hmm. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Mm -hmm. And behold, a greater than Solomon Amen. is here. See, if there's someone that has a valid message from God, mm -hmm. I believe I have a valid message from God, but I'm, I'm willing to subject it to examination. Mm -hmm. And people don't pay any attention to it. Oh. It's not over. Amen. The Queen of Sheba is going to rise up. Mm -hmm. it's not, they don't have to have like Elijah rise up Amen. or Moses rise up. Or Daniel or Isaiah rise up. It's not going to be John the Baptist that raises up. Or Peter or Paul that raise up. It's going to be this queen. This queen of Sheba. That had to manage the government. Took time out from it. To take a trip over to see this Solomon. And she asked him a lot of questions and he answered them all told her her questions. The hint is that he, by he may have told her what her questions were and then answered them. And she's going to, she's not going to have any understanding or sympathy at all for somebody that had access to greater wisdom than Solomon and didn't take the time yeah, to yeah. investigate it and hear it. Right. See, we're talking about the Day of Judgment now. It should be more tolerable. For Tyre and Sidon. <laughs> See, there's levels of judgment. There's, there's levels of harshness. Mm -hmm. And a people that knew less, it'd be a little more, be more tolerable for them. They lived in a dark time. They didn't have access to everything you have access to. They, some of them didn't have the prophets. So it'd be more tolerable. I tell you, I want it to be tolerable for me when I'm at the Day of Judgment. <laughs> I don't want a wave of divine wrath to break out against me. More tolerable. See, these cities are going to be there. People are going to be there. People will be held accountable for their response. Think of the day we're living in. There's remission. Remission of yeah, sins yeah, is preached. That repentance and remission of sins should be preached. Amen. Begin at Jerusalem and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Everyone's going to be asked, what did you do with this remission? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Did you neglect it? Yeah. You read in the Bible where if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins. Did you do that? Or did you go to bed and forget all about the sins you committed? See, that's just the day of accountability. Amen. Now's the time to think about it. There was acceptance, divine acceptance. We were made accepted in the beloved. Did you take advantage of that? Did you flee to the sun so you'd be accepted? See, this is the day of judgment now. People are going to be held accountable for that. Amen. The new creation. What did you do with this new creation? Did you, like, place it on the shelf and go about your own business? Forgetting about it? Did you leave the new man to kind of fend for himself, so to speak? 
That's the day of judgment we're talking about. All this is going to be brought up. Anything that's brought up here is going to be brought up there. Let's put it that way. And what about uh, washing? Washed us from our sins. Holy Spirit washes us. Did you take advantage of being cleaned up and washed? Or did you let the dirt from today stay on you till tomorrow? See, it's the day of judgment we're talking about. We're going to be held accountable for these things. How about the fact that there's the Holy Spirit intercedes for us and guides us and bears fruit into us? What did you do with the Holy Spirit? Did you stifle his work? Did you quench him? Did you grieve him? Did you make it hard for him to produce fruit in you? You're going to have to explain all that. Really, there isn't any explanation. He will just stand there aghast. What about sanctification, touching out the unclean thing? What about the intercession of Christ? What about the intercession of the Holy Spirit? What about strength and guidance and illuminations? What did you do with these advantages? See, God's salvation is great. It's replete with unspeakable advantages. Amen. Amen. But everyone's going to give an account for how they handled those advantages, what they did with those advantages. I don't really mean to be offensive, but there are some people more interested in their family than they are in saving the soul, their own soul. Going to have to account for that, huh? Why did you let your children stand between you and God? Or children, why did you let your parents stand between you and God? Or why did you let your job stand between you? And see, there's all, there's all kind of ramifications. All this is going to be ironed out on the day of judgment. Men will be accountable for how they reacted to all these matchless benefits that are in Christ Jesus. So it's one thing to preach the gospel, and it should be preached. But then men must be told, save yourself from this untoward generation. Amen. And Peter told that to the people at Pentecost before they were baptized. I said before, before they were baptized. Acts 2.37, he said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Acts 2.38, he said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 39, he said, Now the promise, that's of the Holy Spirit, is to you and to your children, and those that are far off. Then he said, With many other words, <coughs> I say, with many other words, he exhorted him, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Verse 41 says, As many as gladly received the word were baptized. They were added to them that day, you know, 3,000 souls. Amen. I can guarantee that there aren't many places that that kind of sequence happens. That's going to be a comment. going to be accountable. Preachers, teachers, leaders, they're going to explain. Not just to God personally. Before an assembled universe, they're going to have to explain, give an account, be a better word, give an account for why they closed their mouths about this issue and let people stumble on in their sin, comfortable in them, thinking that, well, at least I'm a member of the church. Day of accountability. In this day of accountability, men will give an account of their stewardship. Everybody comes into the body of Christ is given something. They're a steward of the manifold grace of God, is how Peter put it. Luke 16, 2 says, He called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Got the word that he had been an unfaithful steward. Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest no longer be a steward. But before I kick you out, you're going to have to account for why you acted like you did. Why you didn't take care of your uh, stewardship. How about this? This all happens when Jesus comes again. See, we're talking about Jesus coming again 
he's going to inaugurate, commence the day of judgment. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 36, But I say unto you, I'm going to say this, Jesus says. I'm not going to hint around and hint at this. I'm not going to put this in a book and figure that you're going to read it. I'm going to say it, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof on the day of judgment. Amen. Now, I don't know of anybody that is out of the danger zone on this. I'm pleased to work harder on this. There's some things fly out of your mouth that you shouldn't fly out of it. Now you're going to have to stand before God for an assembled universe and explain. Give an account for not some idle words, every idle word. Your speech is always to be seasoned with salt. It's never to be idle, shooting stuff off the top of your head. Saying things that are unthoughtful, see? This is serious business. <laughs> Every idle word. And there's going to be a settling of accounts of all people where injustices have been done and inconsiderations have been done and persecution has been leveled and bad reports have been given of God's servants, so all the accounts are going to be ironed out. Amen. Matthew 18, 23 through 35. I'm going to I'm going to read this. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is likened to a certain king which would take account. He would take account of his servants. That is, this is how God operates. He yeah. takes account. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. When he had begun to reckon, he said, for as much as he had not to pay, he didn't have enough money to pay it off, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment be made. The servant, therefore, fell down and worshipped him saying, Lord, have patience with me. I will pay thee all. I'll do it, Lord, if you just, if you just do this for me. Then I'll live for you then. I will. I'll, I'll live for you then. The Lord of that servant was moved with compassion. And he loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred pence. It's like they owed him a couple of nickels as compared to a million dollars. He laid hands on him, took him by the throat, and saying, Pay me that thou owest. His fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. But he would not. But went and cast him into prison till he paid the debt. As he, worked, he worked out the debt in prison. Today they make license plates in prison, make about a nickel an hour pay off their debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, his fellow servants saw what was done. Amen. Ah. Someone said, well, you shouldn't be looking for faults like that. Well, his fellow servants saw what was done. And they were very sorry, came there and told their Lord all it was done. Then the Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest it. I forgave it because you wanted to be forgiven. So does not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? His Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts do not forgive every one his brother their trespasses. Amen. Now, uh, God has given me some measure of grace in this area, not to hold grudges and that sort of thing, because there's some people that have, that have hurt me, you know, 
and it grieved me, said things that weren't true, and cast out my name as evil. And, but I've been able to kind of put it, put it behind, not to let it eat at me. And then wherever there was a case like that, and there are no exceptions to this, even my, even my own children sometimes were involved. When they came and they manifested, they wanted compassion, hey, it was good news to me. Amen. You, I'm not perfect in this, understand. Mm -hmm. But whether you reacted like this is going to be brought up on the Day of Judgment. Mm -hmm. How you reacted. Amen. Maybe there's someone to just say, well, I, please, just forgive me. I'm, I'm sorry. I repent myself. Well, Jesus told Peter, if they do that 70 times, seven Forgive them. Mm -hmm. well, they, would, they wouldn't have done it if they'd really been sorry. They wouldn't have done it again. He says, forgive them. If they do it 70 times, seven, forgive them. Why? Because that's what God does for you. That's Amen. why. Yep. See, all that's going to be brought up at the Day of Judgment. Mm -hmm. Each one will give an account personally in other cities, mm -hmm. generations, nations, but there's the individual. Mm -hmm. are going to give an account too. That was one of our texts, Romans 14, 12. So that every, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Mm. Now, there'll be questions he'll ask. He doesn't mean that you'll stand before him and give a biography. That's not what, he, <laughs> that's not what he's saying. Kind of when it's heavily slanted in your favor. You're going to be interrogated by the judge. And you have to give account for yourself to God. We want you to be able to do this. So the, the way you can is start now giving an account Amen. to God. Amen. You know, Don't let a day pass yeah. where you don't give an account of yourself to God. Before the day ends and the sun goes down, give an account of yourself Amen. to God. To review your life and say, you know, I didn't do very well over here. Because if you don't give an account now, you will give an account then. Amen. Now, what about those that had the charge of the flock? What about them? Paul said to he's reminding the brethren, Hebrews 13, he tells them in the 7th verse, to 10th verse, the 10th or 7th verse, he, he tells them to obey them that had the rule over them. Who is that that has a rule? The ones that have been voted to be the elders? That, that's man's. Mm -hmm. Who has spoken to you the word of God? That's the ones that have the rule. The persons who are the key people in the assembly are the persons that to some measure can take the word of God and apply it to the situation. That's Those are the ones the Holy Ghost has made overseers. Those yeah. are the ones you have to pay special attention to. Then he tells me in verse 17, now obey them the rule obey them that had the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure these church elders are gonna have to give an account for the church. Well, that's what he's saying. So they may for the, as they must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that's unprofitable to you. Remember when John said, I says, walk in the truth so we won't be ashamed in the day of his coming. Remember when he said that? Remember when he said that? He didn't say, so you won't be ashamed. He said, so we won't be ashamed. We've been teaching you these things. I don't, don't drop the ball. Don't, don't live contrary now to what these people with inside have said because they give account for the flock, and they'll have to say, well, they didn't listen to the Lord. I was faithful in, yes, uh -huh. in telling them. Mm -hmm. I announced to them what you said, but they, they didn't listen. That's it. That's not profitable mm -hmm. for you. Amen. You want them to say, you know, Lord, I was part of a good assembly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'll be able to give this kind of an account of all things continue like they are. Mm -hmm. Say, so, you know, Lord, In the last of my life, I was with a good assembly. 
And I'm glad to report to you that they kept the faith. They were walking by faith. And, oh, there were some people that I was concerned about. But for the most part, Lord, I like to be give a joyful account Amen. for them. They, they, they did very well in following what they saw to be truth, whether I said it or someone else did. But see, not all preachers can say that. Some will say, I told them, Lord, but they didn't, uh, they asked me to leave. Oh. Oh, they asked you to leave, did they? And they'll have to give an account. The people. That be. Remember, God told Ezekiel, he says, now, if there's a man or a nation that sins, and I send you to them, and you warn them, mm-hmm. and they don't turn from it, and they and they do turn from it, then they'll forgive. I'll forgive them. If if I send you with a message to them and you don't tell it, they'll die in their sin, but I'll I'll require their blood yeah. in your hands. But if I send you and they you tell it and they don't receive it, you delivered your own soul. I think this is an aspect of the judgment is little known. Mm-hmm. If there is such a thing as a valid Bible college, I think that would be a good course, a good semester course, the Day of Judgment. Amen. Yeah. Kind of go over that what's involved. See, I would, if I was a president of a Bible college or seminary, I'd be very careful about who I let come in. Amen. And I'd tell them, let me tell you, there's a few things you need to know before you come in that God's going to hold you accountable for what you preach. And he's going to hold us accountable for what we teach you to preach. And he's going to hold a congregation accountable to you to preach to. And if you can't stand this fire, you've got to get out of the kitchen and find some other job. One other text. People that have instigated suffering that fell on you. Everybody's got people like this. It's not wise to talk about it. But once you know this, what I'm going to tell you here, once you know this, you can kind of forget about those things because God's going to settle the account now. They're not going to leave it hanging. If they they cause you and you, you you went to bed crying, because there was something happened, you couldn't do anything about it. You tried. Now the people that caused that, so God's taken note of that. First Peter four, four and five speaks of those who think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give an account? Ah. To him is ready to judge the quick or the living and the dead. So the next time that happens and your heart breaks and you you weep. Weep because you wish you could have done better, you wish they would have seen what you wanted, but it just remember these people are going to account to God for causing that. Now, once you see this, you can let go of it. You can let go of the thing. Vengeance is mine. I I will repay now. I'm going to pay him back. Amen. I'm going to pay him back. So I don't have to. Mm-hmm. See, the day of judgment, it's, a, it's all connected with Christ coming again. When Christ comes again, this is what's going to immediately follow. The day of judgment. And he's going to, first of all, he's going to sweep the ground clear. Yeah. Everything that's created is going to be burned up. Yeah. All flesh disappear. All that's going to be there is the spirits of the people, holy angels, God, Jesus, the Spirit. Now we're ready to begin because there's nothing to slant. 
the judgment. See, all of the things that cause people to slant the judgment and corrupt their judgment, it's all going to be gone. And then the day of judgment's going to begin. There's not going to be any rush about it. Because the purpose is to show how great God is. Amen. That down to the most minuscule thing, everything he said, everything he required, everything he admonished us to do was right on target. Amen. And he's going to prove that to an assembled universe. Now, those who live by faith here walked in the Spirit. They took seriously what God said. Maybe there was a period when they didn't understand, but they grew. This is going to be a glad day for them. A glad day. Be like Mordecai here in the news. Hey, Mordecai, you're the boss. <laughs> and those gallows that Haman made, we're, we're going to hang him on them. Yeah. So I bid you to ponder the... Uh, coming to the Lord with regard to the day of judgment mm -hmm. and if you can endure his coming mm -hmm. you'll pass through the judgment mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brother Aaron has our exhortation